We are back talking about anger today. I'm here with my friend Jen Musser. Hi, Jen. Hi. Hi, Mike. And, Hi, and Kara Hayes. Hi, Kara. Hey, Mike. Hi, Jen. Hi, guys. And today we have a, a very important topic. We're going to talk about anger. Anger, anger, anger. It's a big topic that's coming up right now for a lot of people, especially because there's a lot of emotions that are getting built up because of the COVID-19 pandemic and all that's happening. We're stuck in places together and just anger is coming out. And I, I want to share with you that um, I had a little meltdown on Sunday. I got angry. And part of our special project is learning how to release anger. And, and in my normal life outside of COVID-19, I release anger physically. Like I go to the boxing gym and punch things and I, uh, you know, lift weights. I, I get it out physically and the gym is closed right now. There's no boxing gym and I'm in a tiny apartment in New York City. So Sunday night I had this meltdown, just all this anger come over me and I didn't know what to do with it. So as my friends, I thought I would bring that up to you and see if you can help me out and help some of the viewers out there with it. Thanks, Mike. I'm glad that you were able to share that with us. Um, it's a good way to kind of give a, a, a perspective on what, you know, what it's like right now for people at home. And there's a lot of reasons to be angry. I'd say that, <laughs> you know, like things that are internal and then just sort of the bigger picture, like how do we deal with something so immense? And then I think with the extension of everything, now we're delayed longer, we're home longer. Like just that's like a, that wave comes through every, I don't know, a couple of weeks. So there's a process of dealing with that. Um, anger is a big one. I don't know, Mike. Um, let's yeah. try to help you find some, <laughs> let's try to help you find some ways to do that. I mean, for me, yeah. anger is, um, it's not a natural go-to emotion for me. I think I, I tend to intellectualize Oh, wow. angry. So I, I noticed that I, um, well, through the work we've done, I've been able to identify that I intellectualize so I can just, ex I understand and I understand and I understand. And then I never really get to that anger and I never really process on that level. So through this work, you know, I'm, I'm learning to, I guess what I think a big part of it for me is like giving myself permission to be angry. Right. So is this something that warrants the emotion of anger you know like should could i be angry here should i be angry and then just sort of giving myself permission to go there you know so in terms of expressing it um yeah i guess i have a yard i have you know i've been doing a lot of lawn work <laughs> just getting in the soil and like doing heavy heavy work and so that's been just like getting me out there and i'm working myself really hard on the days that i'm home from work that's been helpful for me I'm going to, I got to kind of brainstorm with maybe Jen, do you have some ideas for Mike? Are the mic? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, we, we can hear you. My picture isn't coming up. Are you guys seeing me on the? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So um, for me, I, I just want to state first that anger is not necessarily a bad thing. And Carrie, you brought this up in our last video that I think we're kind of trained to think that, oh, anger is, is bad and we should avoid it. And I, I think it's really important to state just in the beginning of the video here that it's it's not always a bad thing. Anger can bring on a lot of really positive change. You know, when we get angry, we we tend to take action, and I think that that in a in a scenario, uh, in a lot of scenarios, that can be a great thing. Um, but then there's anger where where uh, you know it can be it can come out in a negative way too. And so I, I I think it's good, Mike, that you have like the kickboxing and stuff like that. But yeah, it's like now we're home. How do we do that? Uh, how do we get our anger out? And for me, I'm just going to be blunt here. I've actually just like built up pillows on my bed sometimes. And sometimes if I get in that zone, I, I just hit the pillows. Like I, I just, you, I have to physically like get it out of me, you know? And so that's one thing that, that I actually did that this morning. So <laughs> that's one and 
I don't like you care. I don't always go directly to anger first. In fact, this morning I went to grief first. And oh. um, Kara recently created a document um, how to you know process you know and sit with some of these emotions. And we're gonna uh, share that with you guys. Uh, and I followed that this morning. And I I thought that I was angry, but actually grief came up for me first. And and I and I just let myself feel that. And you you might think that you're angry, but whenever you get in these moments you find that that's, that's not the emotion. So mm. and trusting that process is really important because, you know, that's what this is all about. But yeah, does that help at all, Mike? <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm okay, going to get vulnerable even more here. Um, as a man, um, and I'm not speaking for all men, but I'm speaking for a lot of the men that have shared stuff with me and myself. Sometimes we go directly to anger and we, we, we almost like skip over and, and here's a guy who's in touch with his emotions. You know, I try to do work on this stuff and be aware and talk with the two of you, stuff like that. But still, um, you know, Sunday night, it just went from like zero to a hundred. And I think that's what makes it difficult. And I also struggle with something called emotional dysregulation, where my emotions feel like they're going to explode out of my body. And that's where it's been out of control. But on a positive note, what I ended up doing, um, being here in New York City, I think, you know, just the whole situation is also making me angry. I went for a drive and parked my truck somewhere where I could go for a walk. And I actually thought about what you said, Jen. It actually came to me as I was walking that I need to turn this anger into action somehow and something good. But just getting to that just felt so difficult, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that um, you're sharing that because I think kind of what Jen had mentioned was finding a safe way to express your anger, which is a whole process. I think people can do a lot of damage with ang anger, you know, so how can we do this? You know, so going and taking a walk is one thing, right? I was wondering about sort of more um of the gross motor skills like so push-ups maybe like if you're in a small space like maybe you can get on the floor i know that push-ups can help or even um anything where you're using resistance kind of i don't know if you have anything in your house for you like resistance. i am taking notes keep going <laughs> <laughs> resistance training um i don't know like say you're you know you have teenage boys and you want to help them get it out like even boys wrestling or kids wrestling not necessarily just boys but kind of getting that physical with someone else in a safe way, but kind of, you know, or even getting your partner and pushing each other, you know, a hands to, in a safe way, <laughs> but sort of like that resistance, your body, you know, your body's pushing against each other. You might even find that it's fun when you're also getting it out. You're both processing some things in a healthy way. You might even start crying. You might start laughing and just kind of rolling with it. But yeah, I think a big part of it is getting in touch with what am I feeling? Like Jen said, and then, yeah, what are what are healthy skills right now? I feel like we're just all relearning things. We're just we're in different settings. How do we do this? How do we do any of it? How do we process any of this right now? And um, number one is, what do I feel? I think, what do I feel? Mm. What do I do with it? So, I love that. Um, you're making me think of something that um, back, back during the uh, pre-COVID days, which seemed like a whole lifetime ago at this point, I would um, travel a lot on planes and because of that, it made it hard to get exercise. So, um, and interestingly, I just want to tell you about that. When I would travel on planes, I'd be in the bathroom like four times on a flight, washing my hands up to here. So I don't know why we have to tell people to wash their hands. So that just scares me. But <laughs> regardless, um, I would actually do um, workouts in the bathroom sometimes on a plane. I would actually do push-ups against the wall to help with stress. And so now I'm like remembering that I used to do that and I just never thought to just, you know, when I want to push out my anger, get on the floor, give me 10, you know? Yeah, I like that. You're, you're working with a small space. I don't know if you have a pull-up bar. <laughs> you know, just sort of <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of that yoga pose. Um, I think it's goddess pose, sort of standing it's like a squat, a wide-legged squat. And then you're kind of holding your arms out, you know, this way on both sides. Okay. And it can be pretty, it can be pretty intense in the thighs and like the, the, the core muscles. And I noticed like there's, you know, coming through that strong held pose, I found, I find 
um, it's really powerful. So kind of on the other end of processing your anger, you can really get to a place of your power and then be really effective, right? So I don't know if you look it up, I, I should probably have given you a little more of an example of that, but if you look it up, it can be really like, it can cause a lot of heat in your body. You really get down there and hold it for a bit, make sure you're breathing. And you can even like stick your tongue out, like get really primal with it, which is really, I think a lot of- Hold on, hold on, we're gonna do this right now. <laughs> Hold on. All right, so the wide-legged stance. <laughs> Give me a second here. So it's a wide-legged stance like this? Yeah, so but you want to kind of stand straight with your, your, your body up. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Now tuck in your tailbone, engage the core. Just like breathe. You feel that? Yeah. There's like power in that, though. And then also like you can stick your tongue out and roll your eyes back. Yeah. Get in there. <laughs> Wow. Holding it oh my. is really engaging. It's really this grounded. is going to be on the internet. Oh, my. Um, actually, no, it's funny. I, I, um, I'm thinking of weight training and squatting because I do squat in the gym. And I'm okay as a male doing the goddess pose. That actually did make me feel really good. And um, one of the things we've learned in our secret project is when you're angry and you start to engage the knees – that's when you start stepping into your power. Yeah. And so that just made me think about that, that when you get your knees involved in your anger, I know that seems very out there, but you can start to take the power back. Yeah, sort of like, um, you know, stomping, you know, sort of grounds you, you know. Um, and I'm thinking like, too, uh, what about like music, like um, putting on some music that maybe goes with your, your mood. I'm not necessarily like a heavy metal person, but that tends to make me angry. <laughs> and I'm like thinking, oh, yeah, you could put that on. You could really get into a groove. You know, Mike, I know you do drumming, too. Um, that that I imagine would help get out some some anger, right? Yeah, um, it, it makes it harder in a New York City apartment, but it's something that I... <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I still want my neighbors to like me. Yeah. Um, but it's something, the, the cool thing is I live right near uh, uh, a large park, uh, Forest Park, which is the second largest park besides Central Park in New York City. And I can go there sometimes. I mean, I even thought of like, I can't believe I'm about to say this on video and it's getting recorded, but I'll say it. I thought about buying a bat for myself. Yeah, I was going to say this, Mike. <laughs> I, I, and, and, and if you're watching this you can totally judge me it's fine i get me a bat and and <laughs> with with my mask on walk into the woods <laughs> without getting any kind of police attention here hopefully and finding finding a place where i can literally just take the bat and just like hit dirt you know if i need to not even like trying to hit a tree or anything because i don't want to hurt a tree but just hitting the dirt to get my 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 anger out yeah I love that, Mike. Yeah, I've got a fenced-in backyard, so nobody's going to judge me other than my family. <laughs> I think they're going to be grateful after the fact, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's funny. No, I, I, I love that. Um, actually, can, can I just say one other other thing with that? Um, this might have come up, but I'm sorry to interrupt you there, Kara. Um, but the other thing that came up, and I can't really do it in my apartment, but this might help someone else. Uh, a tennis racket. Yeah. For a while, I would, when I could travel back in the old days, I would have a tennis racket sometimes with me and in my hotel room, just go with the mattress with it. And it was amazing because, um, actually just a quick story about that, being a man and being angry. Um, a lot of men don't cry. And I was one of those men for many years that didn't cry. In fact, I wanted to cry. Like, I was okay with it. I'm like, let's do it. I want to, and I didn't want to just like cry. I wanted to get the ugly cry that Oprah calls the ugly cry where you just like really let it all out. I wanted to have one of those. And um, when I uh, got my tennis racket and used it for the first time in a hotel room, well, first of all, you can't go more than really five minutes with it. <laughs> you start to just pass out. But I remember just falling on the bed in tears and it was a great, way to um let out some some emotion so thank you for reminding me of that yeah thanks for sharing that i, I want to point out too that um you know it's kind of come to my attention through doing some of this work and that because i tend to be somebody who takes on other people's stuff like if there's somebody in the house that's unhappy for example i will tend to take responsibility for that and, and say to myself like you know I just feel responsible. 
And I just want to say that right now, since we're all in close confines with our families, there's a lot of emotions being felt. Um, knowing what's yours and what's somebody else's is, is I think, really vital to, to this work, you know, and, and knowing that you cannot control somebody else's emotions or feelings, you know, and they're perfectly, um, it's acceptable that they, that maybe they're angry, you know, or, or maybe they're unhappy and, and just knowing that you're not in control of that, you're only in control of what, you know, what belongs to you, you know, and the same goes with your, your kids, even not just your spouse, your kids, <laughs> you know, we want to, we tend to want to make our kids happy all the time. Right. <laughs> but it's important that they learn that, you know, it's okay to be angry and you, we need to help them sort of process through that. And Kara, I know you, you have a daughter. What, what's something that you do when she gets upset? Is there, is there an outlet that you kind of give her? I'm um, obviously like, I don't want to give my kid a bat, but <laughs> Okay. I, I have done that. <laughs> but of course, my kid is 13. Um, yeah, I think I what I mostly try to do is just kind of be present with her. And then I follow her lead. Mm -hmm. So if she starts to really feel, you, I can kind of pick up on like, this is, she's, she gets this sort of muddled energy. Like it's like this like trapped discomfort. I, she can tell she just needs to get pat you know get through it and it's you know tears aren't working you know so i try to kind of follow once i notice that you know I'll, sometimes i'll just honestly i'll just give her a little shove <laughs> and she'll kind of come back and like look at me like what and then it kind of turns into it's like yeah, i am a little, I'm a little frustrated and then she might push back a little bit playfully and then we kind of go from there like honestly there's times we've kind of gotten into wrestling which is not you know wouldn't maybe even something i'd done when she was little but we're noticing like the resistance is helpful in the play and kind of bringing that into like a really, I keep going back to primal. It's like very, dealing with anger can be very, you want to get grounded. You want to kind of get on the ground. You want to get playful. You want to get, you know, expressive. And so we'll do that. And then there's times where uh, I've definitely given her a bat or a racket. Um, and then she actually, I, I did buy her a punching bag um for you know just to kind of get through it you can purchase you know weighted bags you know like the ones with the little <laughs> red ball and she has some boxing gloves and there's times where so now she can identify like I'm, I'm angry right now and she'll just go up and like hit the thing for 10 minutes kind of come back down and i think it's just especially with younger people they're like oh my mom thinks this is kind of how i should process her she's she's okay with that you know, then it's like they, they learn to identify their emotions. They learn to express it in healthy ways. It becomes like a normal part of, um, of emotional regulation, you know. So now, you know, that's what we do. Like, and we kind of tend to find out what she needs. And sometimes it's like cardio. Maybe we need to go outside. But uh, she, she'll access her punching bag now that she's older. So, And I, I would not have known this had I not been, you know, doing this work for a few years. So. Yeah, it wasn't I, like I knew this, you know, we, we kind of. I hate to admit that I, I've been that parent who's been like, you know, go to your room, you know, I, I like, yeah. and, and I hate now that I know this, I hate that I, I've done that in the past. But now that I know it, I can, I can, you know, give her different outlets. And she also we have a seven year old and she also has a little punching, punching bag. Um, <laughs> but I think mod, like, <laughs> what we model is more important than what we say. And so you know, yeah. it's so easy right now, like everything's on the internet. Sometimes when something makes us angry, like we're apt to just like turn it off or, you know, at home you can't do that, right? Like you've got to have a way to process feelings without shutting people out or, you know, I mean, maybe you do need to take some time away. Um, yeah. to, hey, I, I need to have a few minutes by myself or I need to take a walk. But, um, but yeah, I definitely think that you need, it's important to be able to, to face your anger and to, to process through it and not push it away, shut it off, ignore it. It, it has to be, it, it wants to be witnessed, as you say in, in the document that you published for us. Um, your feelings want to be witnessed and your emotions want to be witnessed. And I think that's really an important thing to think about. I, I, I agree. And oh, so many themes here. Um, the best place to be right now, if you could, would be living with Kara because she's got the whole setup for, for anger there. Um, you know, uh, I, I love that both of you have punching bags. But, but I want to ask you this, and this um, goes to, you know, the, the both of you, especially being parents, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a parent, but um, you said before that it's important to, uh, you know, not take on someone else's energy, you know, and we all... I mean, even if it's not in your home, maybe it's your neighbor or something else, you know, someone you talk to on the phone. 
and I know this is probably the answer to this is probably its own series of videos. <laughs> so uh, don't feel pressured to give me a long answer here because it's, it's a lot. Uh, how, how do you do that? Like, I'm just thinking like if someone else in my vicinity is angry and I want to be present for them, Kara, as, as you, you know, so lovingly said, I, I love that. How do you do that without taking it on? I, I mean, I think this is all, this all goes back to like emotional intelligence and it's a practice. Like all of the stuff we're doing, I think is a practice. And I think, you know, what I've noticed as being someone who's been sensitive, like, like Jen, um, to other people's emotions is I think you notice your own feelings first and then you check in, <laughs> you begin to kind of practice with checking in. Like, is, I wasn't angry. Like some, say you walk into work, you're in a space and people like suddenly you're angry. It's like, wait a minute, I had a great ride to work. I, not, I'm not angry. Like, am I angry? You know, and then it's like, you kind of realize you're picking up other people's energy. Like other people are angry. And then there's, it, it's a practice. I was so sensitive when I was young that I, you know, I tried to work with elderly people and I would leave feeling like old. It was so interesting. I felt like older and I felt like I, you know, almost crippled when I was around people who were, you know, struggling, you know, with issues in that way but i noticed it took me a very long time to notice what's mine and what's not so i think it starts kind of with when we're dealing with emotions what you know being aware of our own emotions which is the kind of what this guide that i kind of i i wrote up for everyone is it just kind of it's like the beginning of connecting to yourself and your emotions and i think that it becomes more the more you practice it becomes sort of innate like right i know how to sit with myself it's me you know and then i know what i'm feeling right now like once you start to really welcome those emotions in like this is you know some people don't know what an anxiety is like when you ask are you anxious what is that i don't know mm. you know, so kind of sitting with one emotion at a time as they come up and just being present with yourself and really compassionate is the way to start that and then of course you can, you begin to kind of get familiar with what the emotions feel like and then are they mine you know, and then, and then kind of what to do with that after is a whole other thing. Like maybe you need to remove yourself. Maybe you need to just, just noticing is enough, you know, that's not mine. And if it's people you live with and you kind of like, yeah, you're not responsible for those feelings, but you, you kind of want to help them get work through it a little, if they're children, maybe that's easier. Maybe you can kind of engage them without like a direct, we're going to deal with your anger. You know, it can be more playful, but I also think even with adults, like anytime, so I'm a nurse and I work with different populations. I started with kids. And then I, I went on to substance use and now psychiatric nursing. And I think what I've taken from school nursing and working in pediatrics is that anybody I approach, I approach in the same way. It's just sort of, we're just human. And these emotions are big, more complicated as we get older. So just kind of approaching with that same sense of uh, vulnerability, that same sense of sensitivity, even if it's like your partner who's angry, you know, just kind of sit with them, you know, maybe kind of, I don't know, maybe they're not aware of their own anger. So noticing if it's yours and being really sensitive around how, how you approach that with the people you live with and work with. I hope that helps. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that, that's powerful. You know, I, I love what you just said that we're all just human and how you learn to yeah. develop that skill to approach people the same way. I, I just, I love that. Yeah, thank you. It's been, I, I can't say how much I'm, how grateful I am to those like, kids that I work with because it's so raw when they're young it's so raw they show up and this is the emotion I'm in you know so you know as as people get older we have the same feelings you know we still need to be held those feelings need to be seen and held so yeah yeah you know this is a feeling that this is this is something I'm just now at 37 starting to understand and I grew up in a home where um depression was pretty um prevalent in my home. And so it wasn't a matter of just snapping them out of their mood. <laughs> it, was, it was a, you know, a chemical imbalance. Um, and so I think that, um, you know, it took me a long time and I, it's still something that I struggle with, you know, and sometimes it is so heavy that I have to remove myself from the situation. I can't sit with them, you know, and then other times I can, I can recognize that, Hey, I'm feeling okay. And this is not mine. And, and they do need me to sit with them and, and, if you're able to do that, that's obviously yeah the first thing. Especially if you're dealing with kids, you want to be be the role model. But um, yeah, I think that this is this is something that's a new skill for me for sure, <laughs> and I still have 
to recenter myself with, like Kara said, what am I, what am I really feeling? And, and sort of knowing what belongs to you helps to put that in perspective, you know? Um, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Jen. I think it's so important. I, I hadn't really considered that piece of it. Like, are you responsible for that? Can, you know, maybe not, you know, maybe in, in those situations, really stepping back and it goes back to safety. I gotta take care of myself right now. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I get really get, I get now where that sort of sense of responsibility for the people in your home looks like and where that comes from. And that a lot of people have experienced that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I think a lot of people are experiencing that right now, especially more than ever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, as we wrap up, I, I just, on a personal note, I know we're, um, you know, recording this to help people and I hope it does. And if you're out there and this video helped you, please leave a comment below and let us know what you got out of today's video. I'd love to read that. We'd love to respond to it. Um, but I want to say thank you to the both of you because I, I took notes actually, a lot of notes here. And um, I mean, I wasn't angry when we started the Zoom call, but I feel so much lighter right now, like thinking through the stuff that you shared. So I just want to say as, as your friend, thank you both for that. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. yeah. And, and so uh, that wraps it up. Um, is there any final words that either of you have for the people out there who might be angry? Uh, yeah. So Mike, last time you said, um, what is the one thing you would say to somebody who is just starting this work? And the one thing that I would say, and Kara said this in her, in her, um, you know, published document, uh, trust your own process, you know, whatever comes up for you, just let it, let it come up and, and don't, you know, set a certain expectation. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes I sit and I expect to get angry and sometimes I don't. So that's okay. Whatever, you know, whatever you feel is okay. Just let it come up, let it process and just trust, trust your process. Kara? Yeah, I love that. I think the other thing that's coming up for me that I kind of want to mention is, so say we dive into these big feelings, you can say you've had enough. You can end the process. You know, I think that people sometimes they just they continue with it after they've opened it and it kind of goes back into their, their lives. And I know that I've experienced that with fear, which is a whole other thing. But um, yeah, just there's a way to say I'm done now. I've, I've been processing. There's some people naturally get there. Like you feel relieved, you're crying, you're, you know, you there's a relief. But um, and sometimes maybe not. Maybe you just sort of open something that you don't know how to close, you know, maybe you didn't express it. So just, it, just to know that it's okay to, to shut it off too. You, you have the ability to open it. You have the ability to close it. You know, this is, these are just parts of you. Um, so I think. I love that. That. And in closing, what I'm going to say is there's a lot of content that we cover today on anger. This is, there's a lot of stuff in here. And if you've gotten something out of it, I actually encourage you to watch the video again. And, and share it with others. And that's something that I'm going to do because as Kara said, this is all about habits and it's a, it's a process to learn how to do. And we're all as, as a world kind of new to this, like when it comes to the emotions, some difficult stuff, but thank you all for tuning in today. And we look forward to reading your comments and we'll see you on our next video. Take care. Bye guys. Thank you. Yay. All right.